Good evening. My name is Paul Miller, and I want to welcome all of our viewers and listeners to tonight's special Yom HaShoah presentation. Before turning to tonight's presentation, I think it would be useful to spend a few minutes bringing everyone up to speed on the work of our Rutgers Center and the special efforts which have been undertaken to date in the areas outside of the medical profession, the main subject of tonight's special program. As stated in the mission statement of our Rutgers Center, it is to assist vulnerable communities, particularly communities of faith, to enhance their safety and their standing in society by improving their relationships with law enforcement, with other governmental agencies, and with other vulnerable communities. The Rutgers Center officially came into existence in September 2017, but it really is the outgrowth of a program that began several years earlier, which was then known as the Rutgers Faith-Based Community Security Program, which followed the lethal terrorist attack on the Jewish Museum in Brussels. But the Brussels attack was not the sole reason for the Rutgers Faith-Based Community Security Program to protect vulnerable communities. The program really began a few years earlier, following meetings between John Farmer and myself, targeted on finding ways to aid communities on the ground in Europe and America that were facing a rising tide of intolerance, including anti-Semitism, as well as outright terrorist attacks. To those people who do not know who John Farmer is, let me give you a brief description of why I worked with him and his Rutgers team to confront the issues facing faith communities. John Farmer was the Attorney General of New Jersey during the 9-11 terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. He was one of the authors of the 9-11 Commission Report. He served as Dean of Rutgers Law School and then General Counsel of Rutgers University. He is truly recognized as a leading expert in confronting terrorism and someone I am honored to call a friend. The Rutgers program was therefore an attempt to see if active, on-the-ground support of vulnerable communities could make a difference. Over several years of work, the Rutgers Faith-Based Community Security Program demonstrated that, in fact, interaction with vulnerable communities could help, as John said when our center was announced, to break down barriers and help build bridges between vulnerable communities and law enforcement, vulnerable communities and majority communities, and among communities themselves, is something that is critically necessary. And if there is any doubt about the importance of the work being undertaken by the Rutgers Center today, one has to look no further than the recent attacks on the Michigan State House and the U.S. Capitol. And we, of course, cannot forget other attacks, such as the horror of the killings inside the synagogue in Pittsburgh. One of the few things our Rutgers Center did was form a partnership with the International March of the Living, the organization which for several decades has undertaken numerous programs to keep the memory of the Holocaust, the Shoah, alive, lest we forget this horror of the past. As Santanyana said, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. As most of you watching and listening to tonight's program know, I am by training a lawyer. Perhaps because of my profession, but clearly understanding the role that lawyers and judges played in helping the Nazi party implement the horrors of the Holocaust, we joined with the march in working with legal groups, law societies, and law schools in exposing the role our profession played who can forget, for example, the devastating Nuremberg Laws? These past actions and programs undertaken by the Rutgers Center in conjunction with the March of Living bring us to the importance of tonight's special program, the role of the medical profession in supporting the Nazi party and the implementation of the horror of the Holocaust. One way to begin to think through the role of the medical profession is for each of us to try and answer the questions posed by Shmuel Reese at the Center for Medical Education of the Hebrew University Faculty of Medicine. Could the Holocaust, one of the greatest evils ever perpetrated on humankind, have occurred without the complicity of physicians, their societies, and the scientific professional community? How did healers become killers? Can it happen again? As we ponder these questions, there are several facts we should consider. Percentage-wise, more physicians joined the Nazi party than did the population of Germany as a whole. Roughly half of all German doctors became party members between 1933 and 1945. The German medical profession played a role in shaping and implementing many, many, many Nazi policies. Not only did physicians and nurses support the regime, Many became complicit in Nazi crimes. German doctors and medical scientists helped shape Nazi Germany's racial laws. Many participated in forcible sterilizations, human experimentation, 
and the so-called euthanasia of people with mental and physical disabilities. And just as the doctors supported the Nazi regime, so did the nurses as well. In fact, nursing schools began indoctrinating students with Nazi ideology through classes on race and eugenics. The role of the medical profession was so extensive that in 1946, 1947, there was a special trial in Nuremberg known as the doctor's trial. Tonight you will, however, not only hear about the participation of the medical profession in the Shoah, but you will also hear about many other doctors who never forgot their original oath to care for the sick and help save lives in the ghettos as well as in the death camps with names like Auschwitz Birkenau. I would now like to thank our presenters who remind us about the medical evils and courageous efforts of doctors during the Holocaust, our partner, the March of the Living, not merely for tonight's special presentation, but as I said before, for the work they have been doing for decades. The Maimonides Institute for Medicine, Ethics, and the Holocaust, and a very special thanks to the Jewish Broadcasting Service for enabling this special presentation to be seen and heard over its networks, which serve over half a million people globally. It is now my pleasure to turn tonight's special presentation over to Dr. Stacy Gallen, the director and founder of the Maimonides Institute, who will serve as host of tonight's presentation. Thank you, and please be safe. Thank you so much, Paul, both for that wonderful introduction and for your dedication and commitment to creating a better future by remembering the past. The Miller Center for Community Protection and Resilience has been instrumental to the success of tonight's program. We are immensely grateful for their continued support and appreciative of their involvement in creating numerous innovative March of the Living programs that have significantly contributed to expanding Holocaust awareness globally. The Maimonides Institute for Medicine, Ethics, and the Holocaust was founded on the premise that the only way to truly preserve the legacy of those who perished or whose lives were changed irrevocably at the hands of Nazi medicine is to use the lessons of the past to inform how we can and should act today, to foster a personal and professional ethos that values the protection of human rights and the central principles of ethics first and foremost, and to empower the next generation to understand the necessity of standing up and speaking out whenever injustice is present. The lessons of the Holocaust transcend traditional boundaries. They are international, intergenerational, interfaith, and interprofessional. Holocaust education can and should be universally relevant and serve to promote justice and tolerance, equality, and human dignity for all. During the past year, the world has struggled with challenges that call into question our core ethical values. We are facing a global pandemic that has resulted in proposed modifications to basic moral principles at varying levels within healthcare politics, public policy, the media, and general society. Systemic inequalities that emphasize the hierarchy of human life that has long been present in society have come to the forefront of our debate. At the same time, we are experiencing a troubling rise in anti-Semitism, racism, and other forms of discrimination and hate crimes, as well as a lack of knowledge regarding the Holocaust. At this defining point in human history, we are presented with unprecedented challenges. We must be able to use the lessons of the past, those from another defining point in human history, to inform our actions, shape our present, and create a better future. Just as we must learn from the past in order to address our current issues, so we must learn from each other. Hearing the varied and diverse voices that make up the narrative of medicine, ethics, and the Holocaust, those of the victims, the survivors, the perpetrators, and the scholars, are essential to truly understanding the complex nature of this topic. Weaving together this type of comprehensive approach entails the cooperation of many. We are grateful to our partners at the International March of the Living, the Miller Center for Community Protection and Resilience at Rutgers University, Teva Pharmaceuticals, and the USC Shoah Foundation for their tireless efforts to promote Holocaust education. We also want to thank each and every person who contributed their voice to this project. In particular, I would be remiss not to mention Dr. David Machlis, Vice Chairman of the March of the Living and Project Manager Extraordinaire. 
David has put his heart and soul into making this program a success, and it has been an honor and a privilege to work with and learn from him. The broad array of perspectives that you will hear over the next 90 minutes will paint a vivid picture of the power and privilege of medicine and the ways in which they can be used for good or for evil. You will hear about the darkest period in the history of medicine, perhaps in the history of humankind, but you will also hear stories about those who find a way to shine their light. And while the challenges and conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic are vastly different than those faced by medical doctors and nurses during the Holocaust, you will hear about how the lessons of the Holocaust have shaped our response to this crisis. While we cannot physically be together this Yom HaShoah, we are proud to stand with our partners all over the world, international medical associations, universities, and healthcare systems, as we look to medicine and morality as a way to reflect on the past and protect the future while appreciating the miraculous work of our healthcare professionals during this global pandemic.